You can't see air, but you can see the space that it occupies. Each of these tiny bubbles of air bubbling through my aquarium contain millions and millions of tiny bits of air called atoms. One of the great properties of air is that it will take the shape of whatever container that it's located in there. Well, what is air? Air is one of the three common states of matter. We have solids, and we have liquids, and we have gases. How do they differ from each other? Well, solids, you know, have a constant shape right there. So they, they don't change their shape. They just stay that way. They're nice and hard and solid like that. But liquids, on the other hand, you can change the shape. It will take the shape of whatever container that you pour it into. The volume of the solid is always constant. The volume of liquid is always constant. But liquids can change shape. Gas the third state of matter, can change shape and volume. Let's take these balloons right here, and I'll show you what I mean here. Let's see what I can do with them here. All right, and we'll just push them around of this sort. Your lower intestines. <laughs> well, we can have fun with that, but, but the thing is you can change the shape of air, but you can also change the volume of air. And we're gonna go to my vacuum pump and show you what happens here. Let's take this balloon right here. Now the balloon has a set volume of air inside of it. It's trapped because the balloon is tied. I'm gonna place that inside the vacuum chamber. Now what the vacuum chamber does, it's simply with this pump behind it, I will draw the air out of the chamber and the air inside the balloon is of course trapped in there by the, the rubber of the balloon. But let's watch what happens when I do that. So we'll get the pump going here and look at that. As we draw the air out, the balloon is expanding. Oh, okay, enough of that. Well, the balloon popped because the air inside tried to get out. It began to expand and expand because there's nothing around the outside to hold it in shape. So air, we can change its shape and we can also change its volume. Well, what we're going to do is we're going we're to make up some air and give you an idea of what air is actually consists of. It's not just any old gas. It's a special combination of gases that are very important to our lives. So I'm going to uh, cook up a batch of air. And to do that properly, I need to be dressed for the part. So I'm going to be my chef here, get my chef hat on. And uh, let's get ready to make some air, cook up some air. Now air is made up of many different gases, but what we're gonna use today, we're gonna use beans to represent the individual atoms of gas. So our first set of beans here are going to represent the gas nitrogen, which is one of the main constituents of the atmosphere. In fact, it's the largest constituent. And our recipe is going to call for 1,000 beans total. So to make up our air, we need 780 beans. And I'm just going to transfer these right here to our container. This is our cooking container. And we have 780 beans of nitrogen. Now nitrogen is really important to us because it helps plants to, to gain minerals from the soil. It's a very important uh, min, uh, gas for plant growth. Okay, now the next most common gas that's in air is the gas oxygen. Now oxygen is a smaller quantity here, but we're represented by white beans, and we need 209 for our recipe on air. Oxygen is gonna be poured in here, and this is important for a lot of things. We need it for breathing. We're always breathing in oxygen, but it's also needed for fire. The only problem is with oxygen, if you have too much of it, it's extremely reactive. It's a very reactive chemical. And things will burst into flame if you have an oxygen-rich environment. So having the nitrogen kind of balances it out and gives us the right percentage of oxygen and nitrogen together to make air safe to breathe and be around. Okay, now let's take our next uh, gas that we put in here. And this gas is called argon. And argon doesn't do much for us in the atmosphere, but we need nine beans here of argon. Now, I did bring some argon with me to show you. Argon is located inside this tube right here. It's a gas tube and there's the gas of argon. When I turn electric current through it, you can see it glows, kind of like a neon sign. Well, you know, some of the neon signs that you see have different colors, and that's because it's not all neon. This gas here is argon. So this one gives us a kind of that, that bluish or purplish color right there. So that's argon. And then uh, we need something else here. We need to have um, a gas that we hear a lot about these days, and this is carbon dioxide. 
Now carbon dioxide is a gas that we exhale when we breathe, so that's pretty important. It's also taken in by plants, and the bulk of the material that you find in plants, all the structure, the wood or whatever, leaves, it comes from the carbon dioxide that's pulled from the air. So this is really important to us. Well, it's not a lot of the atmosphere. Only about two-thirds of a bean is carbon dioxide. Okay, by the way, carbon dioxide does have a downside to it. It's a gas that um, sunlight comes through, but it blocks the re reflective light from the surface of the Earth going back into space. So it causes the Earth to warm up. And we hear a lot about global warming. Well, that's because of the extreme amount of carbon dioxide that's going up into the atmosphere. And we have one more. And this is just uh, one and two thirds beans. And uh, this is all the other gases. So let me just tell you what these are. We got neon, krypton, sulfur dioxide, methane, hydrogen, xenon, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, ammonia, and water vapor. Whew. Okay, so there we go. And that, we put it all together, close it up here, and we gotta cook it now. And this is a model of the gases that are in our atmosphere. Well, that's our air. It's a wonderful sheltering material that surrounds the earth and keeps us alive. So long.